Which vocal structure are you talking about? We don't have any vocal structure of any dromaeosaur, especially Utah Raptor. Um, the, the only preserved vocal cords that we have are of Panacosaurus, which was an ankylosaur. And even then, scientists don't get preserved soft tissue like that very often. Um, it is extremely rare for that kind of stuff to fossilize. Now that sound, like, it, it's not, it's not even a, a simulation. It's not even a, it's not even man-made. It's a bird. It's that, a rock ptarmigan. That's, that's the sound that you're hearing. It's not scientists making these sounds. It's not any kind there's no there's been no scientific paper especially on utah raptor on what it sounds like we don't know what it sounds like we can only assume what utah raptor sounded like yes this is a very large dromaeosaur it's a very scary looking dromaeosaur but it's it we don't know what it sounds like we don't even know if it's this color there's a lot of people that portray it as like a brown or whatever but the only way to kind of assume what color it was was where it was located and that was utah if you really want to know what this thing sounded like talk to this guy jim kirkland he's he's the utah raptor guy they have this massive block of fossils all there's a bunch of fossils inside here of utah raptor they have Young Utah Raptor, old Utah Raptor, they have it all. And no soft tissue has been found, no feathers, no vocal cords. So how how are we supposed to simulate what the sound is? And I know it's kind of confusing because these videos present this as a fact or present it as if scientists have actually done studies on this because the big one that people have actually done some sort of studies on are of Parasaurolophus on the big crest that hangs on the back of their head that it connects to the nasal passages so scientists had simulated through a computer what air may have sounded like through that and if you look up Parasaurolophus sound that's the sound they came up with that is it there there has been no other studies no you know resonating chambers of any kind like jurassic park 3 they're not doing that because the the type of tool needed for that hasn't been fossilized and with panacosaurus like i said earlier that's not you're not going to be able to push air through that you're not going to be able to 3d model that and push air through it somebody tried to make the resonating chamber quote unquote of a velociraptor just like the movie but it doesn't work because we don't know what the inside of it looks like that's 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 paleontology baby <laughs> so again i can see how this can be kind of confusing because a lot of these videos will have these simulated sounds but they're not really simulated they're just mostly bird calls slowed down a good choice to have because birds are dinosaurs so that's really not a bad idea but it's just the fact that there has been one study of a hadrosaur parasaurolophus and that was it and that was like late 90s we haven't seen a study like that since and so when it comes to these dinosaurs it is a it's it's a good thing to say this is maybe what they sounded like based off of certain animals that we have today and based off of the scientific studies of what somebody can do based off of these animals like sometimes the 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 larynx may not have even evolved in this animal it may not even evolved in t-rex and that was like the late late cretaceous the end of the Cretaceous, the end of the dinosaurs.
because birds they've developed a syrinx which is very different than a larynx we have a larynx crocodilians have a larynx but they're different the, the birds and dinosaurs or birds and crocodilians are archosaurs yeah sure which means they're related to dinosaurs yeah but each one of those evolved differently so their vocal cords their lungs their air sacs their muscles their bones everything evolved differently because especially with dinosaurs they filled every niche they filled everything what what mammals have today they covered what reptiles have today they covered what birds have today they covered they they covered the landscape of what is being eaten what is being trampled what is being you know moved like they did everything they lasted 170 million years so they had plenty of time to one evolve and change and be a multitude of different kinds of animals and stuff like that which is great but it's hard for us to kind of find all that stuff i feel like people nowadays they don't understand paleontology you really have to look up paleontology and if you like reading i have a book for you it's called rise and fall of the dinosaurs by steve buschetti it is uh, a this is really weird because it's like backwards for me there we go rise and fall of the dinosaurs a new history of a lost world this is a really good book because it starts off explaining one where dinosaurs come from and the paleontology behind it all as well so i hope that helps the next time you find a video like this where they're simulating dinosaur sounds listen to the sounds because that remember was a rock ptarmigan the spinosaurus that's been going around is a loon and with the t-rex honestly it was probably some kind of eagle there, there there's a european eagle that kind of sounds like that so it's mostly just animal noises slowed down and there's a whole youtube video where somebody said that they used these specific sounds that's where i found these sounds they used these specific sounds it took them a long time to get them all gathered up and put together and mixed and pitch shifted and toned up and down and all that stuff to try and make the sounds of these dinosaurs it's not what they actually sounded like it's just somebody wanted to know what they could have sounded like based off of the science that we have so i highly recommend reading that book i highly recommend getting into paleontology and kind of understanding it a little bit better another thing you could do if you like podcasts look up i know dino garrett and sabrina they do a really good job at explaining the science behind paleontology and dinosaurs and they interview all sorts of different kinds of people dinosaur enthusiasts paleontologists anthropologists scientists just you name it and they've done it so it's a really easy to digest I, i'm still catching up they have like over 400 episodes so definitely check them out too i i i'm in 2019 i think they just got into uh spring of 2019 um, and they had been doing it since before Jurassic World, the first movie came out. So I highly recommend all of that stuff. If you're interested in dinosaurs, if you're trying to understand these fake videos that are coming out a lot recently, or just follow my channel. If, if that's too much, I'll try my best to kind of reiterate that stuff. So then it's easier for everybody to digest. That's kind of what I want to do here. I want to, you know... I want to make paleontology and dinosaurs a little bit easier to digest and have some fun with it too. So let me know what you think about this.